You will see hydrogen trailer trucks around the highways that you'll never even notice were, were hydrogen. It has predominantly been used as an industrial fuel, and today there's a $17 billion industry in the United States that is predominantly producing hydrogen for use in uh, ammonia production, which goes into fertilizer, for industrial gases, and for uh, a feedstock into refining. Hi, my name is Frank Wolak. I'm the president and CEO of the Fuel Cell and Hydrogen Energy Association, or commonly known as FCHEA. In so many ways, uh, FCHEA is the voice of hydrogen in the United States. We have been around, in fact, we're going to be celebrating our 35th anniversary this year, and our roots go back to, uh, you know, R&D technology, uh, policy work in Washington. And over the past uh, several years, we've become a part of the architecture of building much of the hydrogen policy landscape in the United States that, uh, that led into the IRA. And so we have um, over 100 members of all walks of production, distribution, and use of hydrogen, small companies, large multinational players, all looking to uh, find their place and advance hydrogen uh, as an element of our, our overall energy strategy globally. What we're doing in the country today and some of the policies of hydrogen are to take that carbon intensive series of processes, convert them to cleaner and greener forms of hydrogen, and then expand the uses of hydrogen to new areas and uh, new markets around the world. The um, U.S. is the second largest user of hydrogen in the world behind China. And so we have a foundation that is predominantly, as I mentioned, industrial gas uh, based. Um, the rest of the world has begun to look over, over time at the value of hydrogen in other areas, uh, uh, purely uh, climate-related uh, greening technologies, greening industries. Also, from a security standpoint, one of the beauties of hydrogen is that it can be produced wherever there's sort of water and electricity, and so it becomes a new resource for places that once imported all of their, or their energies. And the United States' place is taking that platform with the abundant resources we have in the U.S., whether it's natural gas or sun or, or wind, the uh, infrastructure that we have in the U.S. Uh, that's already making uh, hydrogen, that's already you know, making ammonia, exporting, uh, many parallels with the LNG industry for exports where the United States could be a supplier of much of what the world is looking for in hydrogen and hydrogen products from our, our origin, which is a very interesting uh, you know, export model. Uh, moreover, there's a considerable number of U.S. technologies that have been incubated here with the help of the Department of Energy, with the, with the help of, of institutions such as Harvard, MIT, around Massachusetts, that are now really poised to become American products that can be used around the world. So hydrogen, from the U.S. standpoint, is a producer, both domestically as well as, as uh, you know, for export, a contributor to world goals of using this product, whether that goal is for energy security in its own way, whether it's conversion to, to ammonias or e-methanol or, or e-methanes, um, or for uh, the, the uh, export of technology and services around the world. So our, we, have a, we have a strong place to play in the world economy as it looks to more and more uses of hydrogen. And just by convening the participants here, 75 or so uh, leaders, um, Harvard has a draw that brings people together to want to convene, not just in the people, but in the facilities, and, and also the willingness to take a risk, the willingness to bring people together into a room where there is a, an open conversation about topics that are um, necessary to have. And so in, in some ways, Harvard is, is asserting its, its leadership role in putting together a, uh, you know, a debate discussion that the topics of the time are, uh, are being aired.